Hi and welcome to this weekly blog with me Wayne from SwimmingCyclingRunning.com This is the last of our session planning uh, blogs or my session planning blogs and this week we're looking at running. So we'll head straight over to the computer and we'll start from there. Okay so here we are once again in front of our blank spreadsheet. This time the sport it says is running um, and what we're going to do this for is a track session on the 28th of the 4th 2012 so this is something for I'm actually planning for this Saturday um, and the purpose is going to be final HE tri session that's the Hatch End Triathlon. Hatch End Triathlon is on the 13th of May so I'm going to consider this the final preparation for that um, as it's the last session I'll take with them before I actually go into that. As always we have a warm-up and our warm-up is going to be jog to walk to run um, three laps slowly increasing to the pace so that the last 200 meters is at or above their triathlon race pace. Now with this particular set um, I want them to experience everything that they would do in a race so I'm going to highlight various things. Uh, you can see here to simulate dead, dead legs at start of the run. Um, now everyone as far as I know, certainly I do, um, when they start their run off the bike they have dead legs and, and what I'd like to do with this particular set is simulate that uh, feeling um, by doing, and I've called this dead legs, two lots of six 20 meters short uphill and back uh, followed by six static standing squat jumps. So that effectively is going to build up some lactate. We've got L4 there, so we've got lactate production um, that we're going to do to try and simulate something of the feeling that you get in the legs when you come off the bike. So we're going to go, there's a short, I know there's a short uphill section, we're going to go up that and back down again, round six times, then six quick standing squat jumps, and then we'll have a simulated dead leg. And we're going to go on to the main set pretty quickly after that. Um, and the main set will be split race pace. So what we're going to do is, uh, I'm going to just get rid of these timings because they're unimportant. Um, this is a simulated race. So the instruction will say 1 times 0.8 with 20 seconds rest before the 800 meters. That's the next 800 meters, which is another 800. 20 seconds rest before the 800 meters. The next one's another 800 meters. 15 seconds rest before the 400 meters. And the last thing we're doing is 1 400 meters. The total there, uh, if I highlight it in red, is 2.8k. The Hatch End Triathlon distance is 3k so what we're effectively doing is split near race pace in as close to race conditions as we possibly can so I'm really trying to get someone to uh, experience the race before they do it now if you notice here I've put L2s and L3s because I don't believe all of our athletes will run all of this at L3 pace L3 for even for a super sprint um, would be for a competitive athlete. Competitive athletes head into that L3 section. But a lot of our athletes are going to do this for the first time um, or they're going to just complete the uh, run. And there's no way someone just completing it will be anywhere other than high L2, low L3 um, or even in L2 completely the whole way. So that's our complete session apart from um, the cool down recovery which is going to be an 800 meters, uh, which we will always do even after a race, slowly but surely taking it down to a walking pace in the last 200 meters. Okay, so that's a fairly quick and easy session. Um, we're going to be only 37 minutes 30 that whole thing takes. The distance is fairly short. Effectively, we've got a warm up, then we're trying to recreate those dead legs and then we're going straight into a race simulation of the distance with short rests followed by a recovery. Interestingly, what uh, energy systems are we using? Well, here we go. I think level one, we're going to do 40 percent. Um, level two, 24 percent. Level three, 32 percent. And level four, 5 percent. That level four obviously is, is what we're doing to 
uh, create lactate in our legs before we run. And I think that probably does simulate a race pretty well for most people. So there you go. We have a specific session for the Hatch End Triathlon um, that is going to test our athletes over the distance or close to the distance they're going to have to do in the Hatch End, which is 3K, um, over short rests. And hopefully with that feeling of dead legs, so that when they come to the race, they won't actually have to experience that for the first time. Okay, so as a coach, what I would tend to do, and the reason I've put 800, 800, 800, and uh, 400, is that I would actually want to uh, be there calling out times. Um, so I'd call out the time someone comes in so they can take their 20 seconds rest and also so that they will know the pace that they're running at. The aim of this obviously is to run fairly even pacing throughout. Someone might like to pick it up on the last 400 but that's purely up to them. To take this on, if you wanted to take this on and say do a 5k, obviously I've got four sections here but you could obviously easily do four uh, five times 1k. Um, if you're going to do a 10k, I would tend to do a 4k, a 3k, a 2k and a 1k. And the reason I'd do it that way is because obviously what you'd like to do is you'd like to test your pace all the way through uh, your race. And as you get towards the back end of a race, it tends to become harder and harder to hit that pacing. So if you've got a shorter distance to do it, you're more likely to actually be successful in that event. Um, instead of doing the dead leg syndrome, if you actually wanted to um, not necessarily start with dead legs, if you want to do this in the middle of a season or instead of a sort of race prep, you could just do some drills there, bunny hops, uh, single leg hopping, um, uh, butt flicks, high knees, all those things, uh, sideways running um, instead of the dead legs and then you'd sort of have a nice end to your warm up. Um, with some drills. So you can turn this into what you like uh, and take it on as you see fit. Do it for any distance um, you like with measured distances uh, and times so that you know that you're hitting your paces each time. As long as you record that you should be great. Well hopefully you've enjoyed those three session plans and you'll find them useful. You can always come back to them if you want to refresh your memory about anything specifically. Next week I'm off to sell for some recuperation after my operation. So whether I'll be able to post a blog from there or not, I don't know. I doubt whether I'll get the actual airtime to be able to do that. However, I will make one there, and you'll see it when I get back. So have a good time. Thanks very much for watching.